Women's Medal. They will fight for redemption. They will fight for a chance to stake their claim among the best. They will fight because that is what our two teams are all about. The first step towards a podium finish begins here, only in the PVL. Welcome to the heart of volleyball. Redemption and Pride. These are going to be the driving forces of our two teams today. Although they may have fallen short in the semifinals, a chance at a podium finish and a chance to end this season strong are still within reach. The goal may have changed, but the fight continues. Now to jumpstart our Thursday doubleheader here at the Mall of Asia Arena. We have the battle for bronze between the Cherry Tigo crossovers and the Signal HD spikers. And later on at 6 p.m., it is the finals between the sister teams, the Cream Line Cool Smashers and the Choco Mucho Flying Titans. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you may be. You can catch us on One Sports, One Sports Plus, and of course, the Filipinas Live app. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Billy Capistrano. And joining me today, of course, we have our courtside reporter, the very beautiful <laughs> Kyla King Sue, and my partner, the equally as beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the equally as beautiful Ayel Estraniero. Now, Ayel, unahin na muna kita. You know, sabi ko nga, it is about redemption and pride for both our teams today. It is going to be a very thrilling match. Exactly, Billy. Um, it's a tough game. It's not just a matter of, you know, gaining momentum, gaining the confidence. We're talking about a podium finish. So both teams, they need their A game to get that advantage. Absolutely right. And of course, you know, we want to get things started. So let's get the ball rolling. Let's get right to it. Pag-usapan natin ang ating dalawang kupanan and of course, their semi-finals journey. Let's start things off with the Cherry Tigo crossovers. I mean, they had an impressive uh, start in the preliminary round. Entered the semi-finals as the fourth seed. But unfortunately, they got swept by the Cream Line Crew Smashers in two games. Exactly. In game one, they were very efficient in their passing but it not, did not translate well in scoring. They had a difficult time in terms of converting points in game two. It was a much tighter fight. Nabor had the balance of uh, ball distribution. It was a team effort. But the numbers really showed the dominance of the Creamline Pool Smashers. But you know, despite losing the Creamline this semis, uh, they have proven, the Cherry Tigo crossovers have proven that their system and their chemistry has improved this conference. Absolutely. And you know, although their semi final stint was cut short, there will always be a silver lining to these things. And for them, it is the emergence of their bright young stars, their young players. One of whom is none other than that girl on your screens, Jen Nierva. She was relentless on defense against Creamline. No, exactly. Jen Nierva had the most consistent performance in the semis for the crossovers. It was a tough job facing the power hitters of the Cool Smashers, but Jen Nierva was quick to read and quick to react. There. Definitely a steady leader in defense. 15 excellent digs and 18 excellent receptions. They will need a strong performance from Jen Nierva again today as they face the veterans. Spikers and the Signal HP Spikers, but you know what, Billy? You know, Jen Nierva is uh, really known to be a fighter, and uh, together with her, their teammates, uh, she will try to challenge the reigning bronze medalist in the Invitational Conference. Let's know more about the preparation of the crossovers from Kyla King Sue. Yes, yeah, let me get started with a little updates from the Cherry Tigo side of things. Now, they do seem to have the upper hand over here with the longer preparation time. And I visited their dugout earlier where I talked to their previous top scorer, EJ Laure. And she told me that they really did take advantage of this longer preparation time to correct their lapses. 
study their mistakes and really make some crucial adjustments in terms of blocking patterns and combination plays. But EJ says that they've reached this point where there's no doubting their technical abilities because they did put up a strong fight against a champion caliber team like Creamline. In her words, hindi pa tapos ang laban. After all, we have today and we will fight for today. Now, as we know, Billy and Ayel, the drama and tension that comes with this battle for bronze is intense and really brings, you know, teammates much closer. So here we have none other than Cha Karandang talking about stepping up for her teammates, Amy Hernandez, in this edition of Heartfelt. Sa mentality naman namin as a team and as a whole, kung ano yung pagkukulang ng isa, pupunan ng bawat isa. Malaking kawalan sa amin si Amy kasi unang-una malaking threat siya sa gitna, sa blockings niya, sa atake niya, at saka yung diba high lift siya. So napakalaking, napakalaking kawalan niya sa amin sa aspects na yun, sa skills na yun. Yung thoughts ko kay Ate Za, ginagawa niya yung best niya every game, every training. Nakikita naman natin kung gano'n niya sinesurrender yung sarili niya sa game, sa kung ano yung role na binigay sa kanya. And sobrang proud ako sa pinapakita niya. Ready naman ako all the time. Every time na ipapasok ako ni coach, talagang nasa isip ko na pag tumungtong ako sa court, talaga makakapag-contribute ako kaagad. Dito na kami, dito na ako eh. Talaga ibibigay ko yung 101% ko na kaya kong ibigay. Kasi hindi lahat ng pagkakataon makakarating kami katulad ng naabot natin ngayon. Diba? So talagang ibibigay ko na lahat. Wala na kititira. Hi Milo! Kamusta ka naman? <laughs> Sabi ko naman sa'yo, I mean, na since day one na palagi ako nandito sa likod. Every game ko, every point ko, isa ka sa mga dedikasyon ko, bakit nagpupursigi ako kasi ayoko ma-feel mo na nalilift behind ka. So, ang laban ko ay laban mo rin! <laughs> I love you, I'm Kim. At isa, super proud ako sa'yo. Gawin mo lang palagi yung best mo mag-enjoy ka lang. And sa lahat ng teammates ko, alam kong ilalaro niyo ako ngayon. Ipanalo natin to. Let's go, Cherry Fight! Once again, that was Chakarandang of the Cherry Tigo crossovers talking about how she's been stepping up for her teammate, Aimee Hernandez. And I'm sure we can expect her to really leave her all on the court today along with her other teammates from the Cherry Tigo side. But standing on the other side of the net is the Signal HD Spikers who are very much ready for this battle for bronze. We know that they're fresh off a very grueling three-game series to say the least against the Flying Titans. They had to recover not just physically but mentally and emotionally all too quickly. Now I got to visit their dugout and I spoke to their top scorer Vanny Gandler who shared with me that actually they had to play it smart and really didn't do anything too heavy nor too fancy in their one and only training yesterday. Take you back to their post-game dugout scene. Vanny says that silence really filled their room but she says that kailangan nilang ma-accept ito na ito yung kapalaran na, 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 na nila this all Filipino conference now with that said the HD Spikers are definitely ready to bounce back but before we talk about this journey for another hopeful podium finish let's first listen to Joblin Gonzaga talking about her longtime teammate all the way from California in this edition of Heartfelt evident naman yung leadership na Rachel, yung fire na Rachel during game, yung sigaw na Rachel, yung happiness signal na miss namin lahat yung kay Rachel. And kung paano niya i-balance in team, yun talagang pinaka-miss namin kay Rachel. Happiness signal! I miss you, Rachel! Para sa ito! For so long, Rachel and Dakis is nakadikit na talaga sa signal. So sabi ni Rachel sa akin, this time siguro, na nawala ako, mas na-feel ng team kung paano mag-stand up. Like, nagsa-stand up naman sila, pero iba kasi may ate Rachel eh. Paano kami nag-cope up sa pag-alis ni Rachel? Hindi siya madali, di ba? Parang relationship. Chares, may coping stage, di ba? So, siguro ng mga first, second, third, third game, mararamdaman mo yung absence talaga ng isang Rachel and Dakis. Eh, nakakatuwa kasi, ang bawat isa kasi sa team, alam mo yung walang pasanin, lahat talaga kami is nagko-contribute sa progress ng team and all, and very, ang bawat ay Ideas and ang bawat suggestion ng bawat isa is napapakinggan talaga, nagmamatter talaga siya. And sabi naman niya, babalik siya. So yun ang pinakakandaan ko, babalik si Rachel Landakis. Hi Awesome Nation! Kamusta kayo lahat? 
at sa aking pinakamamahal na team na Team Seng na good luck sa mga games nyo. I know, kayang-kaya niya yan. At guys, laging tatandaan na walang perfect na team. Pero dahil pinupunan natin ang pagkukulang ng bawat isa, doon tayo na iba. Hihilahin natin pataas, lalaban tayo ng buong buo para sa isa't isa. Good luck guys! And miss na miss ko na kayo and sana makasama ko na kayo soon. God bless you all and salamat sa lahat na sumusuporta sa Signal po. I miss you all and I love you all. There you have it. That was Rachel Dacus and Jovelyn Gonzaga. Gusto ko na, you know, she likened uh, the relationship of Rachel with the team. Na parang totoong relationship talaga. Because absence does really make the heart grow fonder. Now, because Kyle already started it, let's talk about the Signal HD Spikers even further. Specifically, their journey in the semi-finals. Now, it was a whirlwind of a semi-finals for the squad. I yell a lot of highs and a couple of lows. But one thing is for sure. Their eyes are set on a podium finish. Uh, exactly. Uh, they pulled off a reverse sweep, talking about the Signal HD Spikers in Game 1. But Chocomucho came in prepared in Game 2. They controlled the game. They played with confidence and efficiency. In Game 3, it was heart versus experience. Chocomucho was locked in mentally and emotionally. The numbers show it was really a close fight. Truly a heartbreaking loss for the HD Spikers. But this is a very familiar place for them. This is their fourth battle for bronze. So they will bank on their experiences as they will try to dominate the crossovers today. And of course, despite everything they showed us, they have a rhythm to their game and they're hard to stop, especially when they're all in sync. And the maestro behind all of that is none other than the main setter, Jel Kayuna, and she has improved leaps and bounds here for Signal. Exactly, Jel Kayuna, the reigning best setter of the Invitational Conference. She finished fourth in the preliminary round as the best setter. She sets the pace, she sets the rhythm, dictates the pace for the HD Spikers. This is why she plays a very crucial role in terms of executing the game plan, plan of the HD Spikers. 29 excellent sets in Game 1, 13 in Game 2, 20 in Game 3 despite the loss. Still impressive numbers for Jel Kayuna. And she is one of the most consistent players here for Signa. Really makes sure that all her teammates are able to shine. Sabing natin, she is the maestro behind all of that beautiful symphony that we've seen from the Signa. Signal HD Spikers, and if you're a Signal fan, you're hoping and praying that she gets to replicate that same performance in our game today. All right, let's focus now on, again, you always say this, but one of my favorite parts of our pregame, the premier matchup, and it's between two of the most dominant outside hitters that we have in the league today. The young blood versus the veteran, we have Eya Laure versus Cesc Molina. Eya, of course, for the Cherry Tiga crossovers, and Cesc for the Signal HD Spikers. Let's focus first on the numbers of these two players. 12.5 points, average points for Eya Laure in the semis. Uh, meanwhile, Cesc Molina 17.7 points. Uh, a lot of similarities for both these players. Both are versatile and smart players. They have a variety of attacks. Power hitters who are also defendable uh, defenders, all-around player, and are also vocal leaders. The only difference, again, you've mentioned it, one is a rookie and one is a veteran. And you knowing how explosive and competitive these two are, I'm sure you know we're all excited. All the fans and viewers are excited to watch them play today. And I can assure everybody as well that Kyla can agree with me on this one, right, Kyla? Yes, that's right, Billy. Now, we, before we head on into action, we want to invite our very lively PBL fans to interact with us on the Pilipinas Live app, where there is a poll question right below the stream where you can directly answer our question of the game. So, for today's question, our question is which star will have a bounce back for performance after the semifinals. So once again, that's Ea Laure or Cesc Molina. So make sure to take note of their scoring in this match and you can also join in our conversation online using the hashtag PVL2023. So going back to our question, what do you guys think, Billy Niel? Well, definitely both players would want to secure that advantage in terms of a podium finish. But, you know, Ea Laure missed that um, half of the game too. So she will want to really bounce back the game. And you know what, ladies? It's finally time to rock and roll. It's a battle for the bronze. Cherry Tigo versus Signal. Only here on Pilipinas Live. From losing... Grabe kasi yung ladder na inakyat ng team. Gusto kong mapakita ng Cherry Tigo yung tapang pa.
Second referee is Fernando Velarde, national referee. And now let's meet the starters. First for the Cherry Tigo crossovers. Outside spiker from the University of Santo Tomas, number nine, team captain, E.J. Laure. Center from the National University, number two, Jasmine Nabor. Outside spiker also from UST, number eight, Ea Laure. Middle blocker from the Far Eastern University, number 16, Za Carandal. Middle blocker from the Ateneo de Manila University, number 22, Pauline Gaston. Opposite hitter from the University of the East, number 23, Shaya Adorador. Starting liberal from the National University, number 19, Jen Nierva. Head coach for Cherry Tigo is Emilio Kung Fu Reyes. And now the starters for the Signal HD Spikers. Outside Spiker from San Pedro University, number seven, team captain, Seth Molina. Middle blocker from the National University, number two, Rose Lynn Doria. Outside Spiker from the Ateneo de Manila University, number five, Fanny Gendler. Opposite hitter from Central Philippines University, number eight, Jovelin Gonzaga. Middle blocker from the University of Santo Tomas, number 18, Maria Menezes. Center from the Far Eastern University, number 22, Jill Cayuna. Starting liberal from the University of Perpetual Health System Delta, number 14, Jack Dionella. Head coach for Signal is Shaq De Los Santos. This game is held under the supervision and regulation of the Games and Amusements Board. It is game one between Cherry Tigo and Signal. This is the PVL, the heart. Here are your starters. Start a new way to watch the PVL via the Pilipinas live app for Filipinos everywhere. Download and subscribe now for 100. 49 pesos. Bidi Capistrano with Ayel Estraniero. Kyla King Su to give us the latest from the sidelines as we get things going here at the MOA Arena in Pasay City. We have the Signal HD Spikers, Vanny Gandler, Cesc Molina, two of the most dominant outside hitters that we have in the league right now, versus the Cherry Tigo crossovers. Shaya Adorador, Eya Laure, both seeking redemption here in this game alongside of course EJ Laura. Here we go. Set number one, battle for bronze. You know, Billy for both of these teams in terms of lineup, uh, they really have a good match. So it's just really a matter of you know executing the game plan well and staying consistent. And of course you have to have a good start. No, exactly. That is going to spell the difference here in this match as Cherry Tigo will get the first point of our ball game. EJ Laure with a placement shot there, but what a pancake save from Adorador. Just going to zone five. So we kept saying it in our pregame, Ayel. Today is going to be about redemption exactly. and pride. No, Who wants to you know, finish this season strong? It's not just the conference, mm -hmm. it's the season. Exactly. You know, both of these teams, they tried to challenge their opponents in the semis. Uh, they hope to be in the finals right now. But, you know, heartbreaking for both of the teams. But they still have an opportunity to finish on the podium, as you've mentioned. Sabi nga natin, the fight continues for both these squads. And for those who are not updated, the Signal HD Spikers, they came from a very grueling <laughs> game against the Chocomucha Flying Titans just a day ago. Mm. So that's going to be a factor here in this uh, game. Exactly. As well. They have to make sure that they're mentally over that loss against the Chocomucha Flying Titans. For anything else, let's first check in with Kyla Kingsu. Go ahead, Kai. Billy and Ayel, well, you said it, dealing with the fatigue and emotional heaviness that comes along with losing a crucial three-game series in the semifinals is certainly no joke. But then again, we have to remember that as a veteran-led team, Signal is very much experienced with situations like this one. For Captain Cesc Molina, 
she said that she says that there's no time to dwell on what happened but with the help of their sports psychiatrist they were brought back to present to focus on what is at hand and were reminded of who their game is for and why they do what they do amidst all trials and to add to that she says that queen Rad or rachel and dakis who were definitely missing in this conference sent a little inspirational message for her girls to keep their spirits high and their chins up today as closing out another AFC with a podium finish and a medal around their necks is still something to be mighty proud of. Now this report is brought to you by the Filipinas Live app. Get the most extensive PVL coverage all in one app. Catch the games live in main view, hold the cam and fan stream on selected games. Now available on Google Play, Apple Store or via PilipinasLive.com. Now back to you. Thank you so much for that, Kyla. Excellent report. And, you know, we are missing Ran here in the Philippines. I believe, as we saw a while ago, she is in California. She sent a nice message to her babies at ng mga teammates niya. And, you know, Signal felt that missing piece and the start of the conference. You know, Rachel Andakis is just not any other player. She, e she is the leader and one of the leading scorers as well of Signal. So she plays a very crucial role. So right now, it just shows that they've already adjusted, you know, in terms of uh, missing that leader and scorer in Rachel Andakis. Because, you know, if you've noticed, Seth Molina and Rachel, they're totally different. Mm, you know, they have different exactly. leadership styles. Mm. Seth is more controlled, exactly. I would say, calmer. But, of course, effective na rin naman yung, uh, leadership style ni Seth Molina. As we get back to this game, Charity Tigo holding on to a slim one-point lead. Make that a two-point lead. Aya Laura challenging the blockers of Signal. Uh, Aya Laura, even just a rookie here in the Pro League. So, uh, you see her play and you see her not threatened by the blockers, uh, choosing the hands of Jelka Yuna to score a point there. You know, Aya Laure is, let's see, yeah, a rookie, sophomore conference, but she's playing like a veteran. Oh, exactly. And she has been playing like a veteran since her USD days. Imagine being matched up in with Cesar Molina, who's been, you know, a best outside hitter a right. couple of times, a reigning MVP here in the PVL. But you know, in fairness to Cesar Molina, a veteran, but showing no signs of slowing down. <laughs> exactly. As we take a look at this, that is going to be an ace for Aya Laure. Aya Laure starting strong. And they hold on to a three-point lead. However, <laughs> that goes straight to the net for Aya. An early service error. A chance here for Signal to take back that momentum. As Vanny Gandler gets ready to serve. And, you know, we got to talk about Vanny. Mm. She has been amazing this conference. She was really good in the previous one, but she is showing us her full potential here in our second AFC. Exactly. Uh, Vani Gandler playing with more confidence. And, you know, she's more sure of her decisions. She's very confident. And, you know, ang pangit man sabihin, but siguro nakatulong din yung absence ni Rachel Andakis because, you know, not just Vani Gandler, but the entire team were forced to step up. They have to stand on their own two feet, mm. so to say. We got a rally going on here. Ses Molina goes cross court. Oh, Ses Molina choosing the left hand of Karandang, making sure that she avoids the blockers to get that point. Ses, we always say this about her. She is not the fanciest mm. of players, but she is mighty effective. Exactly, one of the most efficient on the side of the Signal HD Spikers. Talking about Ses Molina. Vanny Gandler serves again. Nabor to EJ off the hands of Job Gonzaga. But you know, we also have to talk about EJ Laure. Only one point for her in game one, but really switched things up in game two and scored 14 points, the leading score of the crossovers in that game. So right now also uh, a very big producer in terms of points, EJ Laure. That's right. And you have to remember, I yelled that for Cherry Tigo, the last game that they won was against F2, mm. November 25. So they are on a four-game losing streak already. But the Cherry Tigo is coming in this game with some confidence because they won against the Signal HD right. Spikers in the preliminary game. round. So they that have they have mm. that against uh, the Signal HD Spikers. They continue to hold on to that very slim lead, one point as Nabor will go to Polinga. Stone up top.
top and down below. Lona Barnes really developed that connection with uh, her middle attackers. A big quick attack to Pauline Gaston. No one was there. Gaston avoiding the hands of uh, Rosalind Doria. 12 excellent sets for Nabor in her, in her previous game against Creamland. Here comes Molina with a swipe, no go. Nerva, box set. To EJ will try, she is denied. This time to Gaston. Gonzaga from the back row, no go. Back set, hahabulin. Kayuna Ooh. will go to Rose Doria. No, and this is what's missing from the HD Spikers in that uh, semi series. The activation of Rosalind Doria. We know her to be a lethal middle attacker as well. An explosive attack coming from Doria there. She doesn't score the most points mm. here for, for Cherry Tigo, but she scores the points that matter exactly. the most. Two point lead now for the white shirts. Here comes Adorador. Punches it through. No, quickly says sorry as well to Job Gonzaga. No, but right now we can see that the Cherry Tigo is really trying to power through the blocking of the signal HD spikers. The HD spikers, they get to read the tendencies of the attack, but they're not able to press their hands in. Speaking of, you know, if we talk about the energy that these two are giving off, parang mas relax tong yeah, Cherry Tigo exactly. compared to the signal HD spikers. And we would understand mm. why. No, the pressure really is on the side of the Signal HD Spikers because they would want to finish in the podium again as they did in the Invitational Conference. They finished bronze. We will see how things pan out this Thursday as Cesc Molina on deck to serve. Nabor, one hand Ooh. set. Topolin tries to save that. Janela will go to Gonzaga. She's denied. They find Vanny Gandler, another block. Molina from the back. EJ! And it is a yes for EJ Lauder. Oh, EA Lauder, rather. <laughs> no, great show of patience there by both teams in terms of defense, but We've seen this down the line attack of Ea Laure a lot of times, and Jan Cayuna has uh, been really struggling in trying to defend that angle. The Laure sisters with their hair right now. <laughs> you cannot tell them apart. But anyway, Chari Tigo, two point lead. Here comes Gandler off the hands of Pauline Gaston. Well, great play making there by Jal Cayuna. Only one blocker for Vanny Gander as we take a look at this replay. Doria also very convincing in that approach. That is the first point of Vanny in this game. She top scored in their latest game against Chocomucha. I believe that was 20, 20 points, points for her. Nabor to Laure. Okay, Laure continues to go to the down-the-line attack, but this time too much angle for her. I'm just going to say their last name. <laughs> <laughs> to, be to, say, to be safe. <laughs> right now we are tied 10 all in our first set. Nabor will go to Laure. Regalo, Hinabol, ni Molina. Back set to John Gonzaga. Babalik's a signal, and the point will go to Cherry Tigo. No, missed opportunity there on the side of the HG Spikers. Uh, Gonzaga only with one blocker in front of her. But right now, we see that it's Cherry Tigo who is in control of this game. Would you say that it's a pretty slow start for both teams? Well, it's a slow start, but also because of both teams are really playing well in terms of defense. So we're seeing a lot of exchanges here in terms of scoring. But uh, Vanny Gandler there, too much angle for her trying to go to zone one. And again, you know, the Signal HD Spikers, as we mentioned, it was a grueling semi-finals mm. tourney against the Chocomucho Flying Titans. Three games. We can just understand how tired exactly. these girls are. Only but one day in between right. those. Uh, and it's so not exactly. And Here these comes Vandler. Parang di naman pagod. Parang di naman pagod si Vanny Gander. You know, right now it's really adrenaline and also that the uh, fighting spirit to really finish in podium. So you know, malaking inspiration and motivation yun for both of the teams despite the big loss they had in the semis. That's point number two for Vanny. Cherry Tigo up by one. That's a tight one. 
Janela saves it. Here comes Vanny again. Laure. Good dig by Molina. Babalik kay Vanny. And it looks like Vanny Gander wants to take charge of things here for the Signal HD Spikers. So Vanny Gander is not giving up with a down-the-line attack, maximizing that big gap between the Nabor and the Antenna. The board to Karandang, X marks the spot. And you know, every time the Cherry Tigo crossovers get that good first ball, they're very lethal in that slide attack. Uh, so we head on to our technical timeout. Download Filipinas Live and get free 7-day premium access. Enjoy the NBA, PBA, UAAP, and the PVL along with highlights, updates, and original programs. We are live here at the Mo Mall of Moa Arena in Pasay City. Manapit lang din naman yung Mall of Asia dito. But yes, we are live here on a beautiful Thursday. Two really good games that we have in store for everybody. Battle for Bronze, of course, the Chari Tigo crossovers versus the Signal HD Spikers. And later on, it is the finals. The sister teams will meet the Creamline Crew Smashers versus the Choco Mucho Flying Titans. Thank you for joining us on Pilipinas Live. Billy Capistrana with Ayel Estraniero. We have Aya Laura with four points off three attacks and one ace. Well, so far, we're having a tight fight between these two teams. It's a very controlled game exactly. that we're having here in set number one. Another good dig here. Laure, no go. Kayuna to Meneses. What a save by Nierva and a block by Signal. Well, Jen Nierva has been really stable in the defense of the crossovers, but this time it was well read by the blockers of the HD Spikers. Now, out of system attack there from EJ Laure. Ria Meneses was ready for that. We're seeing good defense mm. from both our squads to start things off here in set number one. Another deadlock. 13 all, our third deadlock of this set as Nabor bumps set to Laure. Kayuna waiting for it, sends it over to Molina. A good dig from Laure. Here comes Adorador from the back. Running attack. Not today, says Laure. <laughs> EJ Laure with her own version of a single block against. Uh, Ria Meneses. You gotta take a look at this. <laughs> reaction after yung hinahabol natin. <laughs> Napapikit na lang si Riri Meneses. <laughs> Alam na niya eh. <laughs> Nabantayan siya talaga ni EJ Laure as Kayuna will set it over to Molina. And she has been avoiding mm. the blockers of Cherry Tigo. Laure again this time straight to the net. Uh, EJ Laure struggling to attack and out of system. Not the best of sets there for her. Another deadlock, I believe the fourth of our...
first set as a beautiful Pauline Gaston. You can see her very serious, only on the court. Pero pag off the court, di masyado. <laughs> no, talking about Pauline Gaston, one of the energizers for the crossovers. At that time, she was blocked. Looking setter, si Meneses. <laughs> In the bore. As we know, she was a converted mm. setter. Nabor again want to play Nandon Simolina. Laure! Oh. <laughs> EJ Laure looking to be that girl. No, exactly. For no, right now, the Cherry Tig crossover is relying a lot on EJ Laure in terms of scoring in the front row, this time powering through the blockers. So far, so good for EJ Laure. But that will be an unfortunate service error for Jasmine Nabor. You know, given this uh, tight set, this tight match, uh, both teams really have to be careful in the service line. It's uh, you against you. You don't want to commit a lot of errors because uh, both teams really trying to score their own points. Attacking is good for both our squads. The defense is good as well, as we said. Kayuna to Doria, that was a good one. And the Kayuna Doria connection that we have seen grow over the years. Oh, exactly. You know, uh, we, we missed this in the semi finals, but uh, this time a better activation for Doria. There will be a challenge, I believe. We have the Cherry Tigo coaching staff putting up the ball in, ball out card. So there will be a challenge. Our very first one of the day and of the game. Also, this uh, could be a chance for the crossovers to try to regroup because uh, right now, the Signal AP Spikers is trying to gain some momentum. It has been neck to neck here in set number one. Ball in or ball out, it is ball in. So that was a unsuccessful call for Coach Kung Fu and the rest of the Cherry Tio crossovers. Kani na kasi naririnig ko si Coach siya kami yan. Eh, wala, wala. <laughs> Sayang yung challenge. So wala nga talaga. Confirmed. Nabor, one hand Ooh. set. Oh, that was a one-two play, I guess. Oh, that's gonna be an error. Mm, a violation there from Nabor because uh, she is a back row player. She can't go for that one-two play. Much to the dismay of Coach Kung Fu. And right now, Signal has overtaken the Cherry Tiga crossovers, 16 to 15 on the scoreboard. 17, 15 Ooh. on the scoreboard. I think that again. That's a one point lead, back to one point lead. A great combination play there on the side of the crossovers. A lot of space for EJ Laure to go cross court. Both teams crawling mm. to the end of this set. We have EJ Laure on deck to serve for the white shirts. No one's really making it easy for the opponent. Oh, oh that is a botched play for Signal. Nobody there to get the ball. It was meant to be a combination. What exactly. happened there? Uh, a very costly miscommunication there uh, between uh, Ses Molina and uh, Jal Cayuna. I think this also happened to them in their previous game. Walang mm -hmm. kumuha ng bola. But yeah, that's something we don't see often. Exactly. From and as we mentioned, you know, errors right now can be very costly. Right now, deadlock 17. Gonzaga, you can, you can hear the fans get, getting into the game as well. Lots of people in pink and purple exactly. supporting both our teams right now. Well, Gonzaga, Gonzaga liking that set of Jal Cayuna. Beautiful attack by Job Gonzaga. They take the lead, 18 to 17. Nabor will find Laure. She's been quiet today. Jonella to Ses Molina. Dug up by Nabor. Bob set to Adorador. And that is outside. Coach Kung Fu not taking any chances. He is going to say that is in, but the signal player is pretty confident that he was outside. No, Seth Molina letting that go. All right. 
expecting that it was outside from our perspective it looked like it was outside but you know sometimes when it's too fast it's really hard to tell so this could be a good challenge on the side of the crossovers and this is a second challenge of coach kung fu let's take a look at it oh definitely outside that is going to be unsuccessful for coach kung fu the second unsuccessful challenge for them so right now, uh, no more challenges left on the side of the crossovers. The score remains 17 to 19 in favor of Signal. Victoria on your screens, Shaya Adorador. We have Ces Molina preparing to serve. Nabor, they need a good one here. Drop ball, no good. Candler straight to the net for Vanny does not go over, and that is her second error in this ball game. Oh, that set was uh, too far from the net. Uh, Gantler struggled in the putting that over. A chance here for the Charitigo crossovers to gain the momentum back on their court. Again, it's been neck to neck here in set number one. Walang uma atras sa ating dalawang kupunan. Shaya. Gonzaga. Again, using the blockers of Cherry. What a smart move from Jovelin Gonzaga. <laughs> I was going to say a very smart play from Jovelin Gonzaga. Not her usual angle. She would usually go cross court, but this time going down the line using the hands of Aya Laure. That's right, right through the outstretched hands mm. of Aya Laure. Doria now with three attack points, and she will serve for Signal. And right from the release, that exactly. looked a little bit short already. Not the best of release for her. And again, release is very crucial, especially in serving. Don't look now. We got some substitutions for Coach Kung Fu. Mylene Paa checks in for the first time today alongside Joini Kagande. Well, Mylene Paa did not start also in this All-Filipino Conference, trying to nurse an injury, but she looks healthier right now. She's been providing those points when needed. You know, she is... I mean, bad after all, but what about Joe Gonzaga? I mean, she has taken on that leadership role alongside Ces Molina here for Signal. And, uh, this is what we've pointed out, how Signal HG Spikers has a veteran team, a lot of, you know, experience for their players. As Nierva will set up Paat. Good dig by Gonzaga. Molina with a push. What about Jen Nierva's defense? Chance here, Gandler. Nierva to Laure. Not a lot of powerful attacks that we're seeing from exactly. both, these both squads. teams scrambling. That's a first. Another chance. Gandler goes up for the kill. Both teams really a bit scrappy in the floor defense. All attackers attacking out of system. But Vanny Gandler this time on top of the blockers as uh, so Coach Kung Fu presses uh, the timeout button. Okay, good block. Okay, okay. 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 Oh, again, same. Pwede So, isang pa sa atang next mo, pwede ka ulit sa to. Join Eliza Valdez and other Philippine volleyball stars on ACES. New episodes every Saturday exclusive on Filipinas Live Download. And register now and enjoy a seven-day free trial. So Jen Nierva, we were talking about her in our pre-game excellent showing for her uh, during their semifinals journey. And also, a fact that we have right now, Ayel, is from the moment Signal got the lead, Hindi na sila umatras. No, exactly. All the way. Uh, right now, it's very clear that they are leading this game. They're controlling the game. Everything going right for them as uh, 
Vanny Gandler one on one against Aya Lowry there, closing the right angle. And I'm pretty sure that's a matchup a lot of people are very excited to see. Siempre, we have Aya and Sis, but what about Aya and Vanny Gandler? Exactly. No batchmates here in the PVL. They entered in the same conference. It's uh, their second conference, you know, as rookies. And right now, the single HD Spikers at set point. And a lot of people were doubting how they would play today mm. because of the past few days. But so far, so good for them. That's going to be an error for... I believe Maylin Baat, and that's it. The single HD Spikers will take set number one, 25 to 19. What a set for them. We can say na medyo come from behind. Yung, yung set na to for the signal HD Spikers. As we go on a bit of a break, we'll be right back. Also wait by the Filipinas Live app. Available for Filipinos everywhere. Download and subscribe now for as low as 149 pesos. We're back here. The PVL, the heart of volleyball. Battle for bronze. Cherry Tigo versus the Signal HD Spikers. And we said it a while back. Ayana. It was like the next set number one. Pero nagpull away talaga yung Signal HD Spikers towards the end. Exactly. It was a 5-0 run to end the set one for the Signal HD Spikers. Both teams really rallying. You know, their defense, their offense, both teams really trying different strategy, combination plays. But you know, we've talked about this right now. It's a matter of executing well. It's a matter of staying consistent. And towards the end, it was really the Signal HD Spikers who stayed consistent and stayed efficient to get the first set. And you know, a lot of people were kind of doubting kung kaya ba ng Signal HD Spikers because we keep talking about that they had that grueling semifinals uh, against the Choco Mucho Flying Titans. Pero parang hindi naman napagod. If you take a look at some of the numbers, what stand out to you the most? Yeah, the numbers show how uh, close that fight was in the first set. Uh, 12 attack points apiece. Uh, both teams with uh, uh, blocks. Uh, two for Signal, one for Charitigo. Crossovers, Charitigo with one ace. But Charitigo again committing more errors in 11 against the five of the Signal HG Spikers. We've mentioned this earlier, both teams really trying to play consistent. So whoever really commits less errors will have the higher chances of getting the set. And that 11 free points from uh, the crossovers uh, really uh, put damage on them. It's about discipline here in today's game for both our teams. As Ayel mentioned, those unforced errors it's kind of like shooting yourself no, exactly. uh, in the foot, right? If you have that many errors in a single mm. set. And you have Jel Kayuna, the main setter now for the Signal HD Spikers. Great connection mm. with Rose Doria. Efficient as always. And what about Mylene Paat? Although her minutes were cut short, 
she has still been such a great leader for the exactly. family. It's very young Cherry Tigo squad. And uh, right now, they're starting Mylene Pat. They need that, that veteran. They need that vocal leader inside the court. And they need a stabilizer as well, especially when plays start to get a little bit scrappy. But Signal continues that momentum. They draw first blood in our second set. Zalkayuna, great play making so far, getting everyone involved. She is the maestro behind uh, this signal team. They're going to save that. Talking about Cherry, here comes Paat. Great placement from Paat as we check in with Kyla Kingsu. Go ahead, Kai. Billy and Ayala, the Cherry Tigo crossovers were well aware that Malalim yung pinaghugutan ng Signal HD Spiders as they were very close to making the finals in this conference and that drive to avenge their loss clearly showed in set number one. Now earlier, you guys pointed out how Aya Laure wasn't able to put up as much offensive numbers in the semi-finals against Creamline and though she sees it as no excuse, Coach Kung Fu actually disclosed with me earlier that Aya had actually been playing very healing very much under the weather and barely got to train this week at all. Kiana Manuel, the mastery of skills and plays, maybe the focus for most players in this crucial last leg recovery has been a louder's priority for this matchup. In her words, no matter what, I want to play to the best of my abilities. We've already reached this far, even as a younger team, so why stop here? I'm not at my healthiest, pero ilalaban ko to hanggat kaya ko. With that type of fighting spirit leading the squad, will the Cherry Tico girls manage to turn things around? Well, you can find out on the Filipinas Live app where you can get the most extensive TVL coverage. View the game through Main View, Multicam, and Fanstream. Download on Google Play, Apple Store, or via PilipinasLive.com. Now, let's head back to this matchup. Now, back to you, Billy and Ayala. That's great, you know, insider info, Kyla, that now we know that Aya mm. hasn't been feeling well the past few days. So Aya Laure was uh, put out in the second half of the second set in the game two of the semifinals. What was put in towards the third set, but then really still not in the, her 100%. But siguro yung, yung hindi 100% ni Aya, parang 100% pa rin sa ibang tao. <laughs> but now as we get back to this game, Signal holding on that slim one-point lead. Here comes Laure. Gonzaga will try. What a good save by Nabor. A spot. Goes for the kill. What a dive there by Hideral. Nabor, combination play. Ooh. Not the best of combo plays, but it still works. And right now, we see that Nabor is really trying to activate Mylene Paat. Uh, making sure that she gets to warm up because uh, they need a lot of her as uh, they would want to get the second set. That's right. Mylene Paat needs to show up as well here for Cherry Tigo in this game. Take a look at the total attack points. 15 for Cherry, 13 for Signal. Paat with a push. Molina with a push of her own sends it straight to the net. Uh, Molina miscalculated that, was trying to go for a soft touch, trying to slow things down, but uh, not enough power there. Back to one point lead for the crossovers. Karandang on deck to serve. Kayuna will find Joe Gonzaga, but what about that block? From Cherry Tigo. No, Jal Kayuna has been going a lot to Gonzaga, and this time the blockers read that well. Kayuna going for that reverse set, but they uh, eh, allowed it ready for that. Karandan continues to serve for the white shirts. Not today! What a great single block by Pauline Gaston. It is a, I believe, a. 5 to nothing run because we saw on the screen a 4 to nothing. I think it's a 5 to nothing run after that block from Gaston. Oh, back to back kill blocks for the crossovers. And that is the greatest momentum buster. <laughs> exactly. I was gonna say it was a big help that back, back to back kill blocks would be a great help to gain some confidence. Uh, but right now they're giving Signal a chance here to gain momentum. It is very important, right, in a series like this to get that exactly. first game. I have a lot of confidence coming into the next one. All important match between these two squads. Chance here for Signal. They're down by two. Gonzaga 
makes it a one-point game. Uh, Gonzaga this time avoiding uh, Ea Laure. Going for a comfortable angle, going cross-court, seeing that big gap, Pauline Gaston late and closing that block. And again, we have to really emphasize why game one for the bronze medal is important because if the final series ends in a game two, game two games, uh, there won't be any game three anymore for uh, the battle for bronze. So game one is very, very much important for both of these teams. And it's not only just for the confidence. Mm. But really, it is very important. Let's take a look at this sequence. That was Mylene Paat. I believe that was Molina trying to reach for it. Unsuccessful. What about Molina Gaston? She's having herself a day here. Oh, credit half that point with a great serving of uh, Mylene Paat. Now a three-point lead for the white shirts. Paat serving. Way too strong for Mylene. No, but right now we see that uh, Mylene Paat is starting to heat up here on the side of the crossovers. So he's starting to warm up mm. for the crossovers. Here comes Pauline Gaston with a running attack. Oh, that running up attack of the crossovers it's really deadly whether it's Zakarandang or Pauline Gaston it has been a problem really on the other side in terms of defense that is her fourth point of the game talking about Gaston nine serving six Kayuna to Meneses <laughs> Pauline Gaston again and right now, the crossover is looking more cohesive. And uh, that alarms Coach Chuck here, uh, calling a timeout. Hi, Bakinek. Sobrang, sobrang okay yung pasa natin. Sobrang okay. Yung atake natin, yung kailangan ni Tasio Percentage. Atake. Pawihin yung mga dapat na atak natin. Huwag ba natin sa atak yung, ano, ha, yung mga magandang pasa, ha? Hindi ako na tayo. Hindi ako pasa. Hindi na tayo. get access to the second All-Filipino Conference of the Premier Volleyball League Live and in HD on One Sports Plus, plus more premium channels for the whole family when you switch to Signal Postpaid. Subscribe to Plan 520 and enjoy three free months with no cash out. Call 88555 or visit your nearest Signal dealer. And Pauline Gaston, three straight points for her. Four points here in our second set and the scoreboard only reads 10 to 6. Exactly, and you know, in that slide attack really forced Coach Shaq to call that timeout. Uh, the HD Spikers need to organize their defense with that slide attack, but uh, no, Vanek Gander with a sharp cross-court attack. Much needed point here for, exactly. for Signal. Because it's already the Lamang ng Cherry Tigo and the momentum was on their side. Beautiful attack from Vanny. And this is what Coach Shaq pointed out. Their passing is actually good they really they just need to find a way to convert it into points three-point lead for Cherry Tigo Gandler serving that's a good serve they try to save it and they send it over and that's a point for Laure. an out of system set there in the back row for Aya Laure but they're still found that hole in the floor defense of the HD Spikers really spinning that ball in zone one. Perfect placement for her. You know, usually players would go for the easy mm, over, but exactly. not, not, not Ea Laure converts it into a point. Kayuna to Molina. That assess Molina. Her third point of the game. If uh, Ea Laure has her version of a smart attack, uh, says Molina has her own version of a placement shot as well. Remember, these two are part of our premier matchup that we have today. Later on, we're going to see their stats as well. 
as Nabor will give this one to EJ Laure, and she will get the point. An easy outing for EJ Laure there. A simple cross court attack, just avoiding the blockers. A lot of risk action there to put a lot of speed. Uh, Vani Gande could not contain that attack. Yeah, six under her belt today. 12 to 8 is our score. Another good dig by Jen Nierva. Laure again, second straight point. So this time earlier cross court, but this time going down the line, and it's EJ Laure again putting us in a technical timeout. Angat ang laban sa pinakabagong sports app na Pilipinas Live. Mapapanood ang PBA Season 48 live in high definition and on demand on any device available worldwide. Download and register now for free. Oh, we have our correspondents, UAP correspondents for Season 86, I believe, for UST Ateneo and La Salle. Lady Capistrano with Ayel Estranero and Kyla King Su giving us the latest from the sidelines. We have our fans starting to fill up the MOA Arena for this game and of course the very thrilling match that we're going to have after Battle of the Sister Teams in the finals. First time ever the Cream Line Coup Smashers versus the Chocomucho Flying Titans. But Chempre, we got to focus on this game right here first. Battle for bronze. Chance here for the HD Spikers and they send it to Doria. Almost a good save by Jen Nierva, but too much power on that attack from Doria. Exactly. Uh, Jalka Yuna starting to activate the middles. We haven't seen a lot of Doria in the set so far, but uh, it's uh, clear that the Cherry Tigo is uh, leading right now and controlling the game. It has ballooned to a five-point lead, and that is a sorry service error from Jel Kayuna. Something we don't see a lot from her. She's one of the best servers in the league and in this uh, signal team. Exactly, Jel Kayuna, one of the lethal servers in the league. EJ Laure, seven points for her in this game. Kayuna to Gandler from the back. So Jel Kayuna really putting a lot of trust and confidence to Vanny Gandler. Three spikers in the front row, but Jal Kayuna still choosing Vanny Gandler in the back row. What can you say about the connection of, of these two players, Jel and Vanny, you know, in that previous conference and compare it to right now? No, the, the, the connection of Jal Kayuna and Vanny Gandler has improved tremendously this this conference and that really shows with the numbers of Gandler as well. You know, she's uh, one of the leading scorers uh, supporting uh, Ses Molina in terms of scoring production. So it just really goes to show that uh, there's a great connection with Vanny Gandler and Jel Kayuna. <laughs> right on cue. So Vanny exactly. Van and Jel. So Vanny Gandler scores another point earlier from the back row this time from the front row. Not a lot of power but, uh, you know, just starting the hands to score a point. 
And you you love that Vanny is really unleashing her full mm. potential here under the guidance of Coach Shaq and the trust of her setter, Jel Cayuna. It's 15 to 11 on the scoreboard in favor of Cherry Tigo. Here comes John Gonzaga. Nabor to Laure. Attack error for Aya. Point goes to signal. Aya Laure was trying to avoid the block of uh, Ria Meneses. Trying to go down the line. And that is her second unforced error in our ball game. Talking about Aya Laure. It is a three-point ball game. Four for Cherry Tigo, three for Signal. Talking about those unforced errors. Nabor! That was a risky set for Jazz Nabor. Vanny with her teammates egging her on. Paat. A little too late for, for Sess. A better angle there from Mylene Paat. Says Molina also, as you mentioned, the late and trying to go for the defense. Well, right now, the crossovers can really rely on Mylene Paat, uh, one of the veteran players on their side. She needs to get fired up here. That was a good serve from her. A good save from EJ Laure. One hand save. Vanny. Nabor. To Laure. Play continues. Gonzaga. And that's a little too far off for Jazz Nabor. The intention was there. Just didn't execute it properly. Yeah, exactly. Nabor tried different players, but you know, her spiders had a difficult time to score a point. Trying to go for a one-two play to surprise the defense of the HD Spikers, but really lacked risk action there. Nabor to Pauline. Vanny now, <laughs> Vanny Kandler, another cross-court attack for Vanny. It is her sophomore conference here with a signal HD Spikers as Coach Kung Fu will call for time. Andito, Andra Bull muna, andito po, yung laki-laki ng area dito sa kapila. Huminga, huminga kasi yung yung kalimutan ko, huminga parang hindi kayo naninigas. Naninigas kayo eh. O sige, ang, ang ano na lang natin, yung atake natin, umaatake tayo. Pero ang depensa, pag nag-drop ball kayo, huwag niyo umiabot sa depensa yung ano, pag nag-drop ball. Huwag mo umiabot sa depensa, pahirapan niya naman lang kahit pa paano. Okay, good try. Ang naging po problema natin, masyadong mahaba yung naatake natin. Ang laki ng area dito, butas na butas. Huwag niyong kalimi kalimutang huminga kasi nga naninigas kayo. Bon Bonbons, nag-execute kayo ng atake. Okay? Lamang pa tayo siya, lamang pa. Go! Jelly! Bye! Experience a new way to feel the heart of volleyball. Watch every set, spike, dig, and block live in HD and on demand anytime, anywhere, and on any device via Filipinas live app. Download and register now. Coach uh, Kung pointed out uh, earlier that it's good that they have a variety of attacks, but they have to choose their placement right. They can't give the opponent an easier time to defend. All right now, it's a two-point game here. A yell. But Aya Laura says, wait a minute, we gotta regroup. We gotta make things right. Back to a three-point lead. Oh, finally, a successful down the line for Aya Laura. Perfect execution there. Was struggling mm. a couple of sequences back. Aya Laura, eight points off six attacks, one block, and one ace for her. That's a good serve from Aya. Vanny again. Jen to EJ, straight to the hands of Vanny. It goes back to Vanny Gandler, not this time. Vanny again! Better reaction from Cherry Tigo. No, it was all Vanny Gandler, but uh, Cherry Tigo crossover stayed patient in terms of floor defense. And uh, it paid off well for them as EJ Laura a bit out of system there, but maximized that the small gap in between the blockers. Now, Coach Shaq was saying, telling Jel Cayuna, you have a middle attacker, you can activate her and on <laughs> 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 
speaking of Riri Meneses, you know, just goes to show how Jal Kayuna is a good listener also as a player, very coachable. And nobody there for, for Cherry Tigo. Donut hole in their defense and it wasn't shown on camera on TV, but Coach Shaq actually mm. called Jel Kayuna possibly to discuss and to say, Sabi ko sayo. <laughs> but now Fanny will be on deck to serve. Nabor, back set to Pauline Gaston. Janela. That was a pretty crucial error there for exactly. Jack Janela. Not the best of ball controls there for uh, Jack Janela. Take a look at that one more time. That almost hit the antenna. That was outside the antenna. It is 19 serving 15 here. Kayuna. Tariri Meneses. And that is a point for Signal. <laughs> that gave Signal a scare because uh, that uh, defense of Mylene Pat almost went in. But a great decision for Vani Gander to let that go. That is uh, another point for Riri Meneses. Jen Kayuna listening to Coach Shaq, getting her more involved. Karandang, babalik sa Cherry Digo Puntos para sa signal, and they are slowly catching up here. And right now, it has been the middle blockers of the HD Spikers. Uh, Ria Meneses earlier, back to back points. This time, kill block for Doria. Three points for Riri. Two attacks, one block. Nabor to Karandang. That was a good dig by Vanny. Nabor is blocked by Doria. Lauri goes cross court, gets it. A classic cross court attack for EJ Laure. That's a, one of her strengths. That's that cross court attack. Well established blocking by Signal, but Laure sharp cross court for her. Easy outing. Great angle on that attack from EJ and Cherry Tigo holding on to that three point lead. But we do know that Signal is alive and kicking here. Exactly. Karandang will play setter to Laure. Another good dig. Molina with some power. Oh, says Molina didn't have to avoid the blockers there. Attacking on top of her blockers. And you know, this is the same scenario earlier. It was uh, the Cherry Tigo crossovers ahead almost all throughout the set. And when they got that lead, they went all the way. So that is something you got to watch out for if you are Cherry Tigo. You cannot let that moment momentum rather mm. slip to the side of Signal, and just the person to do it, Mylene Pat. And you know, uh, crossovers have the advantage right now with Mylene Pat in the front row. A great combination play here, great decision making by Nabor, but even a perfect angle for Mylene Pat going to zone one. We have a substitution here for Coach Kung Fu. Cess Robles will check in for the first time today. She scored four points in their previous game against Creamline. Kayuna will go to John Gonzaga as Nabor to Paat. Another smart veteran move, this time from Mylene Paat. And this is what's missing from the crossovers in that first set, that the post player, that scoring machine, especially towards the end stretch of the set. And right now, it is Mylene Paat on the side of the crossovers. It's 22 serving 18 here in our second set. That's a good serve from Cesc Robles as Vanny goes for it. No go. Paat again. Chance here for Signal. Joust of the net. Doria. Another rally that we have. Here comes Mylene Paat. What a pancake from General! And Seth Molina will end that rally. Credit that to General. 100%. An exclamation point from Seth Molina. But what an effort from General to extend that arm to go for that pancake save. But uh, Seth Molina giving justice to that pancake save with really an explosive sharp cross court attack. Commend these two teams for just being ready 
All sequences on point for them. Here comes Nabor to Laure. That was Jonella. Nakita ko si Jonella sa Nasaya. Well, that was a great uh, dig. Was, yes. Oh, it was coming from uh, an attack from Aya Laure, but an error there on the side of Doria. Momentum killer on the side of the HP Spikers. Charity got two points away from stealing the second set from Signal. Gonzaga! She means business. Oh, that was a deceiving play on the side of the HD Spikers. Point number six for the Bionic Ilonga. Let's take a look at that. Doria going back quick, pulling the blockers. Uh, Gonzaga with only one blocker. Lunag will, will check in. And not the usual position that she plays. Nabor will go to Paat. And that's going to be a point for Mahilin Paat, which, which puts her team at set point. No way that a great pass. Jazz Nabor really has a lot of options, but choosing Mylene Paat, the more experienced player in the side of the crossovers. 24 20. Oof. Not the best of receives. Kayuna will find Vanny! And Vanny Gadler. What else can we say about her? We talked about her earlier. Uh, she's one of the players with the uh, most intensity right now, really giving life to her teammates. Another explosive attack coming from Vanny Gandler. Just has been so consistent here for, for Signal as Labor will find Aya for the set. And it goes in for Aya Laure. The Cherry Tigo crossovers get this set from the Signal HD Spikers. It's a better team effort in the second set for the crossovers. We've talked about EJ Laure, Mylene Pat, this time Aya Laure finishing that second set for them. What a set here for the crossovers. 25-21, more volleyball when we come back. Also, wait by the Filipinas Live app available for Filipinos everywhere. Download and subscribe now for as low as 149 pesos. So, take a look at set number two, 25 21 for the Cherry Tigo crossovers. And a bit of info in that set, I am just discussing it. Hindi na ang Cherry Tigo, right? In, I, I mean, signal in that set. And exactly, and you know what we can highlight really in that set was the a small but a very big adjustment on the side of the Cherry Tigo crossovers, which is putting Mylene Pat as a starter in that second set. They found that leader, as you mentioned, uh, you know, a stabilizer on the side of the crossovers, and that did a lot of damage, you know, in terms of the defense for the Signal HD Spikers, Mylene Pat, with a lot of variety of attacks, with the help of Aya Laure as well, with EJ Laure, and even 
the slight attacks of Zakarandang and uh, Pauline Gaston as the numbers really says it that uh, it was a great display of attacking for the Cherry Tigo crossovers 18 against the 14 of the Signal HG Spikers both teams trying to slow down each other and you know what we can highlight here really is uh, the Cherry Tigo committing less errors in that set from 11 to 5 a really big disparity and that helped them a lot to get the second set it is a better showing definitely for the Cherry Tigo crossovers lots of discipline mm -hmm. in the way that they played also so, I mean, these two teams came here to fight. And that's what we have been talking about. That has been the, the storyline for this game. And we finally saw it from both of them. For Signal, it was the first set. For Cherry Tigo, it was the second set. And as we also mentioned, the fans, you know, starting to, to arrive here at the MOA Arena. Lots of fans in purple, lots of fans in pink, fans in red <laughs> as well. But kami ni, kami ni ayaw naka red today. <laughs> And but not because we're supporting any of the teams. Ito lang po yung uniform namin. <laughs> Wala po kami choice. And of course, it's going to be a really, really great day for volleyball fans, for all our viewers. Thank you so much for watching us on Filipinas Live. If you are in the area, if there are tickets left, mm. come here. Join us at the Mall of Asia Arena for the volleyball action. Right now, we have a battle for bronze. It's Cherry Tigo versus the Signal HD Spikers. For those who just tuned in, Cherry won that second set. Signal won that first set. So we are even in this game. Exactly. And for the Cherry T, the crossovers in that second set, as we've mentioned earlier, it was really a team effort. Most of the players helping in terms of scoring. But, you know, on the side of the Signal HD Spikers, we missed the contribution of uh, Rosalind Doria and the Ria Menezes who were activated towards the end stretch of the set but they played a crucial role especially in their offense you know as a tendency as a threat uh, in that first set so right now um, some adjustments really needed on the side of the signal issue spikers because the crossovers has been playing more cohesive they found their flow and you know again with the leadership of Mylene Paat they really get things going right now and we are looking for more energy from both our teams as we kick off our third set Billy Capistrano with Ayel Estranero and Kyla Kingsu on deck today we have Jack Junella and what about Jel Kayuna one of the most talented setters that we have in the league mm. right now former Lady Tamarau doing the reigning best setter for the Invitational Conference Siyempre hindi natin makakalimutan si Pauline Gaston also a colleague of ours and Here we go set number three Kayuna welcomes us with a service error. Oh, very unlikely for her. Again, we mentioned it earlier in the second set. Uh, one of the lethal servers in the league. And I believe that is her second service error here in our game. Charitigo takes that early lead as Jasmine Abor will be on deck to serve. Kneeling set to Vanny Gandler. Steady dig by Laura. Here comes Gaston. As we check in with Kyla Kingsu. At this point, it is really a test of character. Those are the words of Signal's Vanny Gander, who has had an extraordinary performance this conference. Led her team in terms of scoring against the Flying Titans last Tuesday and is still managing to level up her performance today. Opening up a bit, Vanny admitted that everyone's feeling quite drained already for another three game series that isn't for the gold. But she says that a bronze finish is still a podium finish. And after all, their goal is to go home wearing a medal around their necks, not just for themselves, but for their coaches, managers, and all the people who have brought them this far. Now, Billy and Yale, it was Vanny's show in that second set for Signal. We've, we've seen how she's capable of, and with that intensity and consistency, there's no telling how many sets we'll get to enjoy just yet. Now, this report is brought to you by the Filipinas Live app, where you can get the most exclusive PVL coverage. View the games in main view, multicam, and fan stream. Download on Google Play, Apple Store, or via filipinas.com as we send it back to the game with this service.
Thank you so much for that, Kai. And Fanny Gandler, the, one of the newest additions here for the HD Spikers. Looking like she feels at home. Oh, exactly. And a great adjustment for her. And she has really, again, blossomed in the system of Coach Shaq. And she's been gelling really, really well with this team. And you know, right now, this conference, she played a really big role no, as uh, uh, playing the position of uh, Rachel Andakis, who is absent this conference. And I'm sure Rad is extremely proud of the growth of Vanny here in our second AFC. And there will be, there will be a challenge on the part of the Cherry Tigo crossovers. They're gonna call a block touch. Very early challenge here for the white shirts. And so far, it has only been the crossovers their using third. their challenges. Uh, no challenge still on the side of the Signal HD Spikers. That's right. Take a look at the results of the challenge. There was a block touch. There indeed was a block touch. That is a successful challenge for Coach Kung Fu. First one of the day, first successful challenge of the day for the white shirts. And we have a couple of clarifications here. Coach Kung Fu not really happy with the, what's going on. And can you explain to the viewers, Ayel, what exactly is happening right now? No, right now, they, they, they are going to replay the point. But the, the coaches of the Cherry Tico crossovers is asking for a point. But uh, we're still waiting for the decision. At any rate, I believe the play continues and we, we move on with the rest <laughs> of this game. It is four serving two in favor, of course, of the Charitiga crossovers. Pauline Gaston on deck to serve. Kayuna will send it to Gonzaga. Oh, what a save. Good defense for Cherry. Oh. And Kasuga gets her first point of the game. No, this time this is the adjustment on the side of the signal. HG Spikers, Kasuga in for Rose Lindoria. Great dig there from uh, EJ Laude. Great effort from Ea Laude, but a smarter move there from uh, Jen Kasuga. Nabor sends it to Ea, challenging those blockers. Ball is still alive. Nabor. To Karandang. The signal HG Spiker scrambling there. Here comes Laure. Another rally. Lots of rallies we're having today. Laure again. This time avoiding those blockers. You got players crashing into one another on the court. Nabor. Ooh. Karandang. Almost a miscue. It's still alive. Nabor. To my path, finally ending that rally. So probably our uh, longest rally in this game. But a great decision for Nabor to go for the combination play. Uh, says Molina late in trying to close the block. Cheritigo, a two-point push for them in our third set as Paat will serve for the white shirts. Kayuna, back set to Kasugod, single block, Laure. Molina on the other side! A great setting by Jal Kayuna also on the side of the HD Spikers, creating gaps in between the blockers. So this has been the pattern in all our sets thus far. Close at the mm. start and then someone pulls away. We'll see who that team will be in this set or kung tuloy tuloy na na neck to neck. Exactly, but uh, a couple of service errors already committed 
by uh, the HD Spikers in the start of the third set. General no, but Laure taking advantage of the overpass from General. Uh, right now, it has been uh, the crossovers taking control of this game. No coverage there on the side of the HD Spikers. It is now a three-point game in favor of the crossovers. Kayuna to Vani. Nandoan si Nerva wants to play is good for Jel Kayuna. That was a great dig from Jen Nerva, but uh, Kayuna outsmarting the floor defense of the crossovers there. You have to remember that Kayuna is one of the more offensive mm. setters that we have here. Laure, Kayuna, the Gandler. The Gandler really unfazed of uh, anyone in front of her. And she is now in the double digits talking about Fanny Gandler. 11 big points for her in the third. And we have substitutions here for Coach Kung Fu. Jai Atienza checks in. Karandang takes a bit of a rest. Uh, familiar substitution we also saw in the semis. Nabor will find Laure. As Kayuna will send it to Ses Molina, puts it away. Uh, signal HG Spikers, really anyone activated is able to score a point. A great play making there by Jal Kayuna. A lot of power in that attack of Ses Molina. Mylin Paat could not contain that. We're tied at 7-all here in the third. From the back Ooh. row! A really a matchup worth highlighting. Earlier, says Molina from the back row. This time, uh, Eya Laure also with her own version. A power hit from the back row. Says Molina was there but could not contain that attack as well. Like, even the facial expressions of <laughs> Eya Laure. Kaya alam mo na serious na talaga siya ngayon. And she is one of the most competitive players that we have right now. Most composed as well. That's right. That is ball out for Vanny Gandler. They're putting three people on her. Oh, but uh, there's going to be a challenge. A block touch. That is going to be the first one here for the Signal HD Spikers. And the coaches of uh, Charity go asking if tumama ba sa kamay ng players nila. For context, katabing katabi namin yung bench <laughs> ng Charity or who or whoever is on the right side of the court. So this is gonna be the first challenge, as we mentioned here, for Signal. Nakakatatlo na ang Charity go in terms of the challenges that we've had. And you know, Coach Shaq, Coach Kung Fu know each other very, very well. <laughs> As we eagerly await the result of this challenge. Was there a block touch? Mm. Clearly there was. <laughs> Just no more smiling. <laughs> she knew way ahead of everyone that it was going to be a successful challenge. So again, successful challenge here for the Signal HD Spikers. So, uh, continues to be a close fight here since the start of this game between the Signal HD Spikers and the Cherry Tio crossovers. This is the second deadlock that we're having at the third set. EJ Laure straight to the net, attack error as she quickly looks to uh, Coach Kung Fu and apologizes. <laughs> yeah, but that was a tough angle for EJ Laure, very difficult one. Signal now with that one point advantage, but that's going to be a rotation error for Cherry Digo.
A bit of confusion here on the side of the Cheritigo crossovers, but uh, Pauline Gaston apologizing. Hey, Coach Kung Fu just <laughs> not really sure what's happening right now. But Signal still one point lead for them. Nabor to Gaston, single block. That was Vanny. Chance here for the HD Spikers. They give it to Vanny Gandler. So Vanny Gandler continues to carry the load in terms of scoring for the HD Spikers. That is her 12th point of the game, and she is showing no signs of slowing down or taking a break. She is all in today. Giving that the youth energy. Laure. Kayuna, Vani again. Nobody home for Cherry Tigo. Good read by Vani. Oh, Vani Gander again and again and again. Starting to be that scoring machine here for the HD Spikers. You can really see that confidence in the way that she moves. Ayel, she knows what exactly. she's supposed to do. She knows her angles. She knows how to maximize the hands, the gaps. Uh, really starting to be a smart player here. That's right. As a La EJ Laure comes up with a version of her own. But unfortunately for Signal, ito na nga, buhay na buhay na ang Cherry Tigo. They're kind of closing the lead bit by bit. No, 14 just, excellent sets for Jazz just Nabor. Nabor. So earlier we saw that Zelka Yuna with uh, eight excellent sets so far. And that's gonna be a point here for Cherry. Again, they're closing, inching closer rather to the Signal HD Spikers, really doing it one point mm. at a time. Nothing fancy, exactly. just being at the top of their game. Uh, slowly gaining some uh, momentum and confidence here, but uh, Ria Meneses uh, stopping that right away. And this time, Ria Meneses uh, heading us to our technical timeout. Back here at the Mall of Asia Arena as we go back to our poll question that Kyla asked in our pregame, which star will have a bounce back performance after the semi-finals? Who's your best bet, Ayel? Before we see the results which will flash in our screen. Here we are, the poll results, Ayalaure 56% and Ces Molina with 44%. So the majority has spoken. See Aya Laure now. Let's take a look at their stats this time for our premier matchup. Aya with nine attacks off one block, one ace. Says Molina with seven attacks. So what can you say about our matchup? Well, what can you say about their performance? Well, right now it has been uh, Aya Laure also really trying to contribute big on the side of the crossovers. But on the side of the Signal HG Spiker so far, it has been Vanny Gandler. So they're missing uh, a bit of uh, the production of Ces Molina. But uh, this game still a long way to go. We're waiting for the activation of Ces Molina as well. Of course, we know what Ces is capable of. She is an MVP mm -hmm. for a reason. But maybe Vanny saying, I got this for now. Here comes Spad. That is outside. 
You know, but that's also because the crossovers have, has found a way to slow down Cesc Molina. But uh, Gander making sure she steps up big today. So in moments now that mm. Cesc is not able to really contribute, mm. check she naman si Vani. Exactly. She's done the same in the absence of Rad as we take a look at her stats. 14 points now for Gandler here in our game. As Nabor will find EJ Laure. Kayuna to Gonzaga. They need a point from her. Mm. Easy over. Chance here for Signal as Kayuna will go back to Job Gonzaga. Job Gonzaga successful in that uh, second attempt. Trying to go cross court again. A reverse set from Jel Kayuna. A sharper cross this time. No one was there on the side of the crossovers. As Coach Kung Fu will call for another timeout to discuss a couple of things. No, Coach uh, Kung Fu, they're pointing out that uh, they actually have good passing right now. It's just a matter of converting points. Coach Kung Fu also asking for more effort and aggressiveness from his players because right now he can see that the effort and aggressiveness is really on the side of the HD spikers. As you take a look at the scoreboard, Ayel, it is a five-point push here for the girls in black. It's a three-to-two run for Signal. So if, chair, if you're Cherry, you need to be a bit mm. alarmed. You should have a sense of urgency. Exactly. Just like that from EJ Laure. And that's what we need to see more of from Cherry here in this set. More assertion, more exactly. you know, them being aggressive in attacking. Uh, great response there from the timeout of Coach Kung Fu. It's a four-point lead still for Signa. Laura serving. Kayuna. Back set to Gonzaga. That's a dig by Nerva. But at this time, they find Seth Molina. And he said she was a bit quiet. Medjuna check na but not in that sequence. Finding a way to contribute. You know, you can't slow down, says Molina, but you can stop her from trying to score a point, this time using the hands of Mylene Paat, powering through. Riri Meneses, four points for her. Paat will try. She is unsuccessful. Kayuna to Gonzaga. <laughs> Easy money. For Jov Gonzaga. Oh, best moves there for uh, Jov Gonzaga. Recognizing that everyone was ready for a power hit, slowing things down, just spinning that ball over. Easy outing. The lead is ballooning here for the HD Spikers. As Kayuna, babalik na naman. Hey, Gonzaga! <laughs> Uh, Job Gonzaga definitely have the hot hands right now. Earlier it was Vanny Gander in that second set. Right now, seems like uh, Job Gonzaga is uh, scoring majority of the points here. That is her ninth point talking about Gonzaga. It is a seven-point lead for Signal. Let's make that an eight-point lead. What a block here. And she's doing everything mm, right exactly. now. Exactly, from offense to defense. Uh, we know her to be very reliable, but a better execution for her this time in this third set. Dangerous waters here for Cherry Tigo. It has ballooned to a nine-point lead for the Signal HD Spikers. They have not come up with an answer yet for the resurgence of Job Gonzaga here in this third set. And uh, that's also because Aya Laura has been really trying to go for that down-the-line attack, but uh, Job Gonzaga guarding that angle well. 
They need something good. And Pauline Gaston saves the day. A faster transition this time coming from the front overs. A perfect pass. A perfect set to Pauline Gaston in the best angle for her to score a point. Gaston serving. Kasugod will join the scoring party here for the HD Spikers. A timely activation for Kasugod from uh, Jel Cayuna. A slide attack for her. And they're inching closer to the end of this third set. 11 points for Gonzaga as she serves. Nabor. Oh, this is going to be a chance here for Signal. They go to Ses Molina. And she does not waste the opportunity. And uh, right now we're seeing a more organized, a more cohesive uh, Signal HD Spikers. Better communication as well. And that leads them to better execution. This is a very, very comfortable lead for the HD Spikers. Ayel looking to close out this set. Ses Robles. She's blocked. Good coverage by Nabor. Baat. That was a good dig by Jonella. Chance here for Cherry Tigo. Who do they go to? Robles. And that was a good combination play from Jack Nabor. Exactly. And this is what they need more combination plays to create the gaps in between the blockers. And we have substitutions for Coach Kung Fu. We have Ronquillo on the court for the first time today. And she has not played in the past couple of games that Cherry has had. So they're looking for that magic bunot. Babalik sa signal ang ball. Here comes Cesc Molina trying to avoid the blockers. Ball's alive. That's too good! That is going to be outside. Well, Jerica Yuna was uh, trying to activate Kasugod again. Let's take a look at that play. But Coach Shaq will say that there was a block touch on that attack. So another challenge here for the HD Spikers. I believe they're second of the game. Score reads 22 13. No, a tough challenge here because uh, Kasugod was uh, moving and the blocker was moving as well, talking about Cesc Robles. So we're going to take a look at the, the replay and the results of this challenge. Let's take a look at that. Looks pretty clean mm. uh, from this angle. Yeah, too much angle from uh, Jen Kasugod was trying to go down the line, but the set was already too near the antenna. So that is going to be unsuccessful for Coach Shaq and the rest of the Signal HD Spikers. Score remains 22-14. Here comes Kagande, who also checks in. Kayuna. <laughs> good, good vision there mm. from Jill Kayuna. I mean, a great effort from Dari. Di lang nataas ng maigi. A quick thinking from Jill Kayuna, saying that the big hole Looks like this set will pretty much go to the HD Spikers, 23, serving 14. Ronquillo. That was a good attack from Ronquillo. Gandler! Cavani so Gandler again. Every time she's in the front row, she's able to score a point. But also, we haven't talked a lot about the... Uh, uh, Jonella, who's been very stable in That's the floor right. defense of the HD Spikers. Very steady. Manning the defense. Kagande to Robles. Kayuna, Molina. And that's going to be outside. Not yet for, for Signal and for Cesc Molina. But they are at set mm. point here, 24-15. Uh, the HD Spikers with a comfortable lead right now. The crossovers, uh, they need to play perfect volleyball. And if you're a fan of Cherry Tigo, you just want them to finish this mm. one strong. Make it a little bit hard for Signal. Kayuna to Vanny. And that is it for set number three. 
And what a perfect way for them to end it. Then by the attack from Vanny Gandler, she has been playing so well here in this game. Well, probably the most consistent and efficient on the side of the HD Spikers talking about Vanny Gandler. 16 big points for Vanny Gandler. Cheritigo 15, Signal takes this set at 25. New streaming experiences also await by the Filipinas Live app, available for Filipinos everywhere. Download and subscribe now for as low as 149 pesos. And the Signal HD Spikers bounce back in that third set, 25 to 15 against the Cherry Higo crossovers. And that set was all about Vanny Gandler and, of course, the defense of the Signal HD Spikers. And Factor, you know, your supporting cast. Cesc Molina and John Gonzaga. No, exactly. That set started with a couple of service errors from both teams. But when Signal found their flow, when Signal found their momentum, they did not look back. They led all throughout. They dominated that set. And a great contribution again from Vanny Gander. But great activation also from Jen Kasugod, who was the bigger adjustment on the side of the HD Spikers in that third set. Uh, so we see a big disparity in the numbers in the attack points. 18 for Signal, 10 for the Cherry Tigo crossovers. Both teams still trying to get those uh, kill blocks. 2 for Signal, 1 for the Cherry Tigo crossovers. No service aces for both teams, but both teams also playing consistent. Uh, 4 errors for Signal and 5 for Cherry Tigo. So we just have the Signal HD Spikers being the more aggressive mm. team, I would say, in that third set. You know, especially offensively, yeah. that 18 attack points is really big for them against the only 10 for uh, the Cherry Tigo crossovers. They were more sure of their attacks and the, the flow was there for Signal as opposed to the crossovers. But all is not lost. They can extend mm. this to a fifth set. It's just going to boil down to who wants it more. No, again, a lot at stake here. It's a, it's a podium finish. There's a big advantage when you win game one. And you're going to have, you know, that momentum mm -hmm. coming into game two because you're not sure if you're going to have yeah, exactly. uh, a game, game three. three. It will depend on that Choco Mucho and Dreamline final series if they will have uh, third game for the battle for bronze. Here we go, set number four, and Vanny is blocked. Kayuna to Riri. Chance here for Signal. One hand set to Meneses. What a good dive there by Nierva, but the point ultimately will go to Job Gonzaga and the HD Spikers. Not Job Gonzaga making sure that uh, she goes for the pole in the floor defense of the crossovers. Still having that uh, personal momentum from that third set, talking about uh, Job Gonzaga. That's right. As we take a look at Vanny Gander now with 16 points, 16 big ones here in our ball game. But she's blocked. Kayuna to Vanny from the back row. That was a good dive. First from Laure and then from Junella. 
and Gonzaga overcooks that one. She knew it the moment she let that ball go. Exactly. She wasn't in the best position to go for that spin attack. Too much spin, too much angle for her. We're tied at one. Game face on for Gandler as Cesc Robles will be on deck to serve for the crossovers. Kayuna will find Molina aiming for the back as we check in with Kyla Kingsu. Billy and Ayel heading into this set number four. The big factor of experience will play a crucial role in closing out this game for the Signal HD Spikers. But if we're talking about the experience, the crossovers do have their veteran Mylene Paat, who shared with me that reflecting upon their semis experience, she believes that napakita naman ng bawat isa ang pinagtrabuhan nila. In her words, natalaman kami dun, but the spirit of teamwork and resilience was really there. And in their regrouping, she shared that ang pinakatumatak sa isip niya ay ilalaban ang battle for bronze. As Mylene joke, malapit naman ang kulay ng bronze. Sa gold kaya the dream is still very much alive and so is this game. Now this report is brought to you by the Pilipinas Live app where you can get the most extensive PVL coverage. Enjoy all matchups on main view, multi-stream, and fan stream. Download down Google Play, Apple Store, or via PilipinasLive.com. Now back to you, Billy and Nayel. Actually, may point naman talaga si Mylene. Medyo malapit rin naman talaga yung color <laughs> ng bronze sa gold. So, tama naman. <laughs> and uh, also, bronze rin yun. <laughs> a great report from Kyla that yes. uh, Mylene Pat actually pointed out that, you know, despite losing the semis, they've really proven that they Correct. improved as a team. You know, the system, the chemistry, uh, especially this conference after missing the semis again in the previous conference. You have to remember, this is a very young team. Mm. Right, a very young team, a lot of new additions to the squad. So, of course, the chemistry will not be formed in just six months. Maybe sometimes even more. Exactly. As we get back to this game, it is a one-point lead for the HD Spikers. As we take a look at that last play, that was Karandang with a running attack. Molina was there, but uh, could not press her hands in. Kayuna. We'll send it over to Molina. Laure. Hindi lang nataas ng maayos ni Cesc Molina. And Kasugod, I think, was also a little too late to pick that one up. Oh, but a great effort from uh, the players of the HD Spikers. We're tied at four here in our fourth set. Bump set to Gandler from the back. No, but the, the crossovers really could not find a way still to defend Vanny Gandler because every time it's Vanny Gandler attempting to score a point, it's almost an automatic point for her. And that barely, you know, it just kind of grazed mm. the, the end of that line, that court. The ball to EJ Laure. And that is going to be a point for the charity or crossovers. Check that. That was Aya Laure. I don't know how many times they're going to confuse the two here because at the back of their jerseys, it says E Laure. <laughs> and their structure also, their build. They really look it's the same. It's the hair. <laughs> well, both very beautiful players, of course. And Aya Laure now 12 points for her. And she overcooks that one a little too strong for Aya. Yeah. And you know, right now, especially for the crossovers, every point is important. They can't give away a lot of free points to the Signal HD Spikers because we saw how dominant the HD Spikers were in that third set. A lot of confidence brimming from the side of Signal right now. Laure, single block! Konti na lang para kay Karandang. Tumama lang sa net so it bounced back to her. But right now for the HD Spikers, offense from defense, uh, they're really executing it. And they look more composed mm. compared to Cherry Tigo at this point. Nabor, back set to Karandang. Great defense we're seeing from the HD Spikers too. Karandang wasn't ready for it, still went for it anyway. Cesc Molina blocked. Kayuna slows down the pace. Chance here. Laure, that's too strong for Aya. 
No, Laura trying to go to zone 5, but last risk action there. So a couple of errors already from uh, Ea Laure. And uh, Kyla also mentioned earlier that the Ea Laure is not 100% still trying to recover. And that is a service ace from Jen Kasugo. So now we see Ayel, everybody from Signal contributing in their own way, which will prompt Coach Kung Fu to call for time. Get access to the second All-Filipino Conference of the Premier Volleyball League live and in HD on One Sports Plus, plus more premium channels for the whole family when you switch to Signal Postmates. Subscribe to Plan 520 and enjoy three free months with no cash out. Call 88555 or visit your nearest Signal dealer. Let's get back to this game. It is a 4-1 to one run for Signal here. That's going to be a miscue from... Jen Kasugod. <laughs> They're just laughing it off. Natawa na lang, <laughs> natawa na lang din si, Va si Vani tawang-tawa hanggang ngayon. Sana pakita natin siya. Tawang-tawa pa rin siya. But, look at Vani. Can <laughs> Could not contain her Could laughter. Contain. Well, it's always nice to have comedic relief. Mm. Siyempre, pag medyo tense, tense. na yung atmosphere. Oh. The play continues. Sorry, Vanny, but we gotta get serious here. Oh, it's still alive. But nope, it will go. The signal. So, nakatulong naman yung yeah. comedic relief. Na, nabawasan ng tension. You know, only for the AC spikers, but right now, the crossovers really, good. really look so tense. Exactly. For Cherry Tigo, I think it's all about loosening up. A little bit here at this point in this game as Jelka Yuna on deck to serve for Signal. Nabor to Gaston and, and we need to see more of those confident attacks from Cherry Tigo. This running attack has been working for them specifically for, for Pongai or Pauline Gaston. Yeah, but right now really uh, they, they need some energy here. The, the, yung konting gigil, the, the effort, the aggressiveness that Coach Kung Fu has been trying to look from the crossovers. Kayuna, the gandler. And that will go to Cherry Tigo. And I think that is something that we need to see from Cesc Robles. You gotta take a look at this. Look at the reaction after as well. Uh, they need exactly. to wake up here in this game. Some confidence That's also right. and decisiveness. And don't see Pauline. This time to Vanny. Straight to the hands of Paat. Robles will try to salvage that one. Riri. Ball still alive. Good coverage from the crossovers. Chance here. That is going to be my lead pass. And right now, the crossovers uh, seems to uh, find their flow here. A more organized offense on the side of the crossovers. A much needed point for them trying to close this gap. And again, we need to see my lead pass, you know, be that stabilizer for, for Cherry Tigo. Kayuna. To Gonzaga, but that's going to be a net touch violation called on the crossovers. But they have to avoid those small errors, the tiny details. It was a, a great block on the side of Pauline Gaston, slowing things down, but you know, a net error on the side of Cesc Robles. Vanny, 17 big points, 16 attacks, and one block. And Cesc Molina, Regalo, ready, ready 
It's a great serving from Gandler, targeting A. Laura there. An overpass gives uh, Ses Molina the advantage to get a point. Again, you can't give that overpass to Ses Molina. She knows what to do. For right now, you can really feel that tension on the side of Cheritigo as compared to how Signal is acting. Exactly. And Signal right now with a really strong front row. Not help the case of Cherry Tigo, but you know, expect Mylene Paa to lead that charge for the white shirts as she has done so many times before. She also has the experience. Continues to rally her team here, talking about uh, Mylene Paa. Just a two point game. Signal still holding on to that lead. Kayuna will set it over to Ses Molina. Great angle from Ses as we go to our technical timeout. Get access to the second All-Filipino Conference of the Premier Volleyball League live and in HD on One Sports Plus plus more premium channels for the whole family when you switch to Signal Postpaid. Subscribe to Plan 520 and enjoy three free months with no cash out. Call 88555 or visit your nearest Signal dealer. So live here at the MOA Arena in Pasay City, Billy Capistrano with Ayel Estranero and Kyla King Sue. Everybody waiting for that second game. We all know why it is the finals between Choco Mucho and Creamline. But syempre, hindi natin pwedeng kalimutan Ayel ang napaka-importanteng laban na ito. Signal HD Spikers versus the Cherry Tiga Crossovers. A battle for bronze. Well, both teams are still trying to work hard. They would want to finish this year with a podium finish. But a happy new year <laughs> and Merry Christmas and then happy holidays. Who wouldn't want that, right? As we get back to this game, three-point lead for Signal. Take a look at the total attack points that we just saw a while back. Nabor to Pauline Gaston. And the combination play is working for the Charitigo crossovers. So we're not seeing a lot of balls going to Pauline Gaston, but uh, every time she gets uh, that set, uh, she really tries to get that score right away. Speaking of Pauline, she's been averaging this whole conference 6.1 points per game right now. She's at 11. 11 points. So, so far, so good for Gaston. Aya will chase and set it over as Signal will give it to Gonzaga. She's blocked. Kayuna to Molina. And the blocking of Cherry Tigo showing up big time here. Exactly. Uh, really trying to slow down the offense of uh, the Signal HD Spikers. Uh, great work from Eileen Paz, but great effort also from Karandang. Don't look now, Aya. This is a one point game. Gaston serving. Kayuna. To Gonzaga again, the blocking on point for Cherry. What a dive from Gaston. Great defense. Paat on both ends. That is outside for Gonzaga. They're going to call a challenge. 
No, but uh, right after uh, the referees called it out, all the players on the side of the signal HD spikers were really calling it in, asking uh, Coach Chuck to call a challenge. But it was really, really close. And I don't know, from this angle, what do you think? Oh, that was a really tough, that, to tough one, right? Because I I could say that I saw it went mm -hmm. in, but I don't wanna. <laughs> we nakita na lang natin yung replay, sa kaka tayo magconfirm. You know, but uh, this could be an important challenge for them because uh, the charity crossovers have uh, been uh, stringing up some points here, really closing the gap, trying to lead this game because so far it has been uh, the Signal HD spikers leading all throughout the set and more importantly we see that cherry is bringing life to mm. their game and the energy is up unlike a while ago or in that previous set mashadong tense exactly so now they're having that confidence building that confidence as well Let's take a look was it ball in or ball out and it is in any part of that ball that touches the line is still inside. So that was a successful challenge. Malapit na. And a really na. tough one. Credit to the urgency of uh, the players of the HD Spikers. But great eye sa coaching staff ng Signal. Laure! Off the block! We're seeing some intensity now coming from uh, Ea Laure. Again, unfazed by the blockers. And we gotta commend also Cess Robles. Ayel, she has been that spark plug exactly. here for That's true. Coach Kung Fu. Speaking of, here comes Robles. Dug up. Vanny off the hands of Karandang. You know, Vanny Gander from the back row to the front row, left pin, right pin, anywhere. you know, she really knows how to score a point. She knows her angles. Now really, we're seeing a more confident Vanny Gander. It's a very different Vanny that we're seeing compared to how she was in college. I'm not talking about the skills, mm. but the demeanor exactly on the court. Substitutions here for Cherry Tigo. Adorador makes an appearance again. We haven't seen her in a while. And here comes Kagande. Oh, Coach Kung Fu wants a complete front row here. Wants more options in terms of offense in the front row. As Cesc Molina prepares to serve 12 attack points. I believe wala pang whistle. There wasn't a whistle yet. And you, you know, it's nice to see Signal. Uh, smiling, mm. just laughing, having a good time. Exactly. After that very heartbreaking semis series against the Chocomucho Flying Titans. Right. A three-point game. Here comes Cesc Molina again. Chance here. Kayuna to Kasugod. Shaya. Off the bench. Gets a point. Instant uh, impact here from Adorador. Her last appearance, I believe, was in the first mm -hmm. set. Powering through the hands of Jelka Yuna there. Yeah, Aimee Hernandez. And we are all hoping and wishing for her swift recovery. Vanny again. Kagande to Karandang. And that was a good save from Hinera. Yes. Just nobody to get that. Exactly. No support That's coming right. from her teammates there. I think there was a bit of hesitation to the teammates. Niya. Let's take a look at it again. And the late decision there from Cesc Molina. To and go also Vanny on the other side. So there were a couple of mm. HD spikers vying for that ball. Kayuna. Babalik kay Gandler. One hand save from Nerva. Kayuna to Kasugod. And Jen Kasugod also having herself a game here. And you know, Kayuna has been really trying to activate uh, Jen Kasugod. We haven't seen a lot of her this conference, but you know, your teammates knows you best and she knows what Kasugod is capable of right now. Impact points for Kasugod. That's, you know, bringing a lot of confidence mm. to 
Kasugan as well. Five points for her. Robles will try. Gandler. Oh, that is outside. They call it out. As Coach Kung Fu wanted to call for a timeout. A timeout. But, uh, you know, know, ref. Uh, we, we have uh, technical changes at uh, this conference. Right. Uh, they're only allowed one timeout. And they can all talk to each other. So challenges. Mm -hmm. Error seven right now for Cherry Tigo as Kayuna will find Gandler. She's been effective. She continues to be effective here for the HD Spikers. And now it is a four point game. You know, it's not just the power from the attack of Andy Gander, it's also the speed that is really making it difficult for the crossovers to defend her. And Vanny has reached the 20s, 20th point for her. Don't look now, yell, here come the Signal HD Spikers making their way to the end of this game, possibly if Cherry Tigo does not do something about it. And Kasuga uh, making sure that she takes advantage of the opportunity given to her today in one of their most crucial games, this confidence. Next man up mentality mm -hmm. for Jen Kasuga. And what trust from Coach Shaq too. Exactly. Nabor, want to play! Smart one from Jazz Nabor. The perfect timing for her to go for that one to play. Everyone really trying to prepare to block the attackers on the side of the HD Spikers. Great placement also. Gonzaga not ready for that. She was caught off guard as Karandang will serve. It's a four-point ball game signal in the lead. Robles goes for the drop. And Pauline Gaston punching it to the other side. Di patapos. Right now, it's Coach Shaq's turn to call for time. Ulitin mo lang. Ulitin mo. Okay. O, makinig. Okay, makinig. O, break lang natin yung momentum. Okay. Press ball muna ulit. Tapos create ng attack. Angel, di back row ka ha. Di back row ka. Okay. Ha. Okay. Tapos ganito. Ha, ha. Kailangan makapunto sa tayo sa attack natin. Para pag ikot, tatlo attacker natin. Okay, coach. Angel, back row ka ha. O, apat. Kasi meron pang back row doon. Okay. Okay, ha. O, sige. Attack pass muna. One, two, pass. Okay. Stay focus ha. Focus. And finish strong. Finish strong ha. Join Eliza Valdez and other Philippine volleyball stars on ACES. New episodes every Saturday, exclusive on Filipinas Live. Download and register now and enjoy a seven-day free trial. Good timeout called actually by Coach Shaq just to try to stop that momentum from the Cherry Tigo crossovers. Vanny. They let that one go. They thought that was going to go off block. And uh, since it has been Vanya on the side of uh, the HG Spikers, uh, the crossovers has already recognized that. They're guarding her well right now. But uh, that's when the uh, HG Spikers need to cover to support Vani in the floor defense. We have Gandler again. And she had three. Three. Blockers right in front of her still manages to find a way. No, it's uh, unbelievable talking about Vanny Gander still finding the gap in between the blockers. They're very, very determined, really, talking about Vanny Gander. 21 serving 18. Nabor sends it to Robles. And that's going to be a point for Signal, and they're feeling it right now. Oh, the flow, the momentum really is on the side of the HD Spikers. 19 excellent sets so far, and two attack points for Jel Kayuna. Spells trouble. Oh, but Robles sends it over. And Joe still manages to get a point out of that. Exactly. It was almost an overpass, but uh, Zob Gonzaga making sure that she gets the last touch. Just tipping that ball over, beating Pauline Gaston. 
The Sigma HE Spikers are two points away from winning the Battle for Bronze Game 1 against Cherry Tigo. If you're a Cherry fan, you're hoping for a turnaround of some sort. Gaston! Steady hands from Janela. And Jovin in Gonzaga puts it away! A great dig from Jack Janela with a great reverse set coming from Jal Cayuna to Jovelin Gonzaga, making sure that Jov Gonzaga's only one blocker there. We have reached match point for the Signal HD Spikers. Paat. Cayuna. Gandler for the game. Not yet. They're still alive. Cherry Tigo is still here. And Gaston is making sure of that. You know, but it's a safe scenario as the third set uh, crossovers. They need to play perfect volleyball here because the HD Spikers is already at match point. Nabor serving. Kayuna to Gandler. It goes to Jerry Tigo. Not yet. Let's remind everyone that the meeting of these two teams in the preliminary round, we reached five sets and then went on for almost two hours and a half. We will see what happens in the next couple of plays. Kayuna to Riri. We got Cherry holding their ground. Laure. Gonzaga. And that is it. Four hour game. Jovan in Gonzaga. The Bionic Ilonga. The veteran for the Signal HD Spikers. With the finishing touches here in our match. Ayel, what a match between these two teams. Oh, exactly. A great display of teamwork, not just by the Signal HD Spikers, but also from the crossovers. But again, we talked about this earlier. Whoever will execute better, whoever stays consistent, will definitely get this uh, game one of the Battle for Bronze. And we had a lot of exciting rallies as well. We're going to talk more about this game when we come back. Relive this game and all PVL games anytime, anywhere on the Filipinas Live app. Available for Filipinos everywhere. Download and subscribe now for 149 pesos. Signal HD Spikers take this match against the Cherry Tigo crossovers. And Kyla King Su is with our best player of the game. We with Kyla. Thanks, Billy. I'm here with our best player of the game, of course. None other than Vanny Gandler. A big, big congratulations to you. And of course, to the Signal HD Spikers for winning game number one of the PVL Battle for Bronze. So, uno uno, let's talk about your team's long three game series against the Flying Titans. So, can you tell me what was the mind shift, uh, the mindset shift like entering this matchup? Um, of course, we came from a tough loss, but we know that. We know that the fight's not over, so now we're trying to go for the bronze medal. Oh yes, Vanina, we know that you only had yesterday to really recover, just one day to mentally and physically recover for this matchup. Can you share any of your preparations and what do you think really worked for you girls to perform well today? 
Yeah, we just focus on our own skills and just recover well by resting. <laughs> um, and yeah, not, nothing spectacular, but Charity goes a good team, so we really study them well. Melvani, this fight for bronze is still far from over. We still have game number two, which will continue this Saturday. And this is the PVL, where anything can happen. So can you tell me, what can the fans expect from you and the Signal HD Spikers for Saturday? Yeah, so of course the job's not done. And we know that Charity Go is going to give us a good fight. So now we're going to focus on our recovery. And tomorrow we practice again. Melvani, I'm sure you want to greet your family and friends and all your supporters. Go ahead. Um, I just want to say... Hi to the Signal Awesome Nation, uh, Team Vani Unite, my parents who are out of the country right now, um, Tita Sara and Atibia. And there you have it, that was Vani Gandler, our best player of the game. Congratulations once again to the Signal HD Spikers for taking home game number one for the Battle for Bronze. Now back to you, Billy and Ayel. There you have it, our best player of the game with Kyra Kinsu, Vani Gandler. Deserving ni so, mm -hmm. deserve na deserve talaga ni Vani ang award na yon. Of course, the Signal HD Spikers, as we mentioned, they take game number one battle for bronze against the Cherry Tigo crossovers. No, but for the Cherry Tigo crossovers, it's still not done for them. They can go back to the drawing board. Uh, they can uh, get a uh, game two. But again, uh, Signal HD Spikers will also prepare for them. So a more crucial game two for both teams. That will be a very exciting match up ahead on Saturday. And that is it for our first game. On behalf of my partner, Ayel Estranero, Kyla King Suderek, Nick Earnshaw, and everybody behind this production, I'm Billy Capistan saying thank you for watching the PBL Battle for bronze but do not go away because coming up next it's finals game one between choco mucho and cream line only here on one sports